Hi everyone, so I wanted to try something new today and that is do a quick video of the latest personal knowledge management weekly post or PKM weekly um, that's just about to be published so just run you through the latest and greatest things that we have from the past week from the PKM world so what we have is updates on capacities, TANA, LogSeq, Obsidian, one or two from Notion and some other productivity thoughts which I will run you through. So capacities to begin with, they've brought in a new or updated way to bring highlights in to capacities. And Beth from the capacities team has done a great video on that showcasing how to do it, how to bring it in and what you can do. There we go, and how you can use it. So that's definitely worthwhile checking out um, if you've got a few minutes to spare just to go through it. And you can bring in basically any highlight from any website into your capacities database. So that's worthwhile. Um, Michael, one of the capacities founders and developers, he basically just responds to a question of how he deals with the daily page and uh, how, how he goes through it on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and he's provided a bit of a, of a template agenda. I guess that's what he's got coming up um, during the day. To-dos, tasks and things, various different routines that he's got prepared in the morning, some things to do, um, I guess he does time blocking it seems, um, and tasks, I'm, so, I, I'm guessing some of these to-dos will then link to some of these blocks that he has down here, and it seems like to be quite a good one, so I'm walk 10, 20 minutes, and then the work shut down, and what he learned, so it basically starts off the day, what do I need to do? What do I want to achieve early in the morning? I guess these are the important things that he has and that he wants to complete these. Things to do with work and shut down just to close off and anything that he's learnt at the end of the day. So that's quite a useful one. I guess he's done it in capacities, but you could use it in just about any app. Um, the team did also post an article on what offline first mode means for, for the user. Uh, basically, what they're doing in capacities, they're developing an offline first um, mode of operation. So just now it's currently all online, uh, cloud based, but uh, there was a few server issues, uh, not only with capacities, but um, a couple of things that happened last week with Crowd CrowdStrike and everything. So they're moving towards a offline first basis. And basically what it means is that this sentence here even if the internet is down, even if we don't have a stable connection, even if we go away from our internet connectivity for a while, it will not affect our way of working within capacities. It will always be there and we will always be able to work. And then I guess it syncs after that, once you connect once again. So that's, that's a great way forward. I think it's uh, certainly useful and certainly something that is, is needed. Um, yeah, you can check the full article out here and there was a couple of tutorials that Beth and the team posted uh, backlinks how to use them I guess backlinks now since Rome introduced them are, are becoming second nature but the interesting or slightly more interesting one that I thought was capacity as an outliner so in capacities not only can you do bullet points you can do full text you can do sections reports etc etc and this article here focuses on how you can use your the outline portion of capacities to basically draft out ideas, thoughts and projects so that you can flesh them out later on. So I think what I found su surprising um, is just how much time and effort the team is putting into just keeping the community up to date, what they're doing, how they're doing it, why they're doing it. It's, uh, it's things that certainly are, are useful while still maintaining the app and building it and continuously doing it, impressive stuff. Next we have Tana, um, so Ev Chapman, she posted a, a video on, uh, on how she uses AI chat within Tana and basically what she's done is she's cancelled her uh, chat GPT, so, well I don't know if she's cancelled it, but she suggests that you can cancel the chat GPT subscription of about $20, $20 a month and if you sign up to Tana Core for $12 a month or $14 if I'm not mistaken you can you can access the AI chat. Um, so that's something worthwhile if you're on the fence um, about signing up to Tana Core or ChatGPT and you want to interact with your notes. 
flip side of, of the one above is that a user basically changed from Katana to Capacities, um, just the way that Capacities, everything is an object. Um, I personally find it a little bit easier to manage information in Capacities. You can have, um, it's a bit more structure, a bit more structure to the notes um, coming from a folder-based and notepad-based um, background and experience. I agree with the OP that it's um, it's a bit easier, but I guess the flip side of that is, is that if you develop uh, time or make time and develop your capacities, understanding and experience, I'm sure you can do something similar in TANA as well. The other thing, which is a bit contrary to capacities, is that it seems to be a bit quiet of late with the with the TANA team. They They're not really publishing anything any updates, any concrete information of when, let's say, the mobile app will come, some offline mode will come, uh, code blocks, uh, some basic features features um, of a note-taking app when they're going to be released. It just seems to be it's on the radar and it's certainly important, but nothing concrete, no, no knowledge are they even working on it or something like that. So a few users, and I just extracted one uh, comment here from, from the Slack, a few users are a little bit apprehensive or a little bit on the fence about signing up and developing their time in TANA if they don't even know what's coming next. So that's one of the things that I definitely think needs to be improved is TANA needs to start, uh, have a roadmap, not a timeline, you don't need to say, let's do, we'll do this by this date, just have a roadmap of what the important things are and what the team is working towards so that at least users can be kept appraised of, of what's going on. And this user does say, Capacity does this perfectly, of, of keeping users appraised on what's going on. At TANA, I have absolutely no idea what you're currently working on and what is planned next. So, yeah, just something to keep in mind for, for the TANA team. And I also think they need to come back to their um, jovial selves since TANA Core has been released. I think it's it's taken a very serious, um, serious tone. Uh, not many posts. Uh, Twitter is very quiet. Slack's very quiet from the team itself as well, so something that definitely needs to, to come back on board. I appreciate it's the holiday season, etc., etc., but you can only make so many excuses. LogSeq, uh, the LogSeq database, that's at least from Trello, that's complete. So 12 out of 12 tasks have been done in the LogSeq database mode, and I do know that they are internally testing it. Although, having said that, the Ramses in the Discord did say the next step is several months away as closed beta, closed alpha testing will take place. So hopefully, though, they're going to slowly just increase that closed alpha so that those that want to try it can try it. Although, having said that, you can build it yourself from the GitHub repo, which a user did. And what they found was that there's still a few issues when you import into the DB version. So lots of notes um, having no connection to the graph but have backlinks when open. So that just, it's, it's something under development. Um, it's been under development for the past good few months. So it probably just needs a little bit more time for the team to get it just right and release it to the masses or to the wider public. But it's certainly interesting and certainly interesting to play around with. So I'll post a link in the description below. Where you can test it out it certainly adds a lot of functionality and it'll be interesting to see how it goes in the long run um cloud sync issues th this has been a long-running issue that that logseek's encountered and i don't think it's only logseek there's other apps which have the same issue it's basically if you want to use iphone MySync, icloud whatever it's called you keep having conflicts um errors notes being deleted notes being lost notes being moved overwritten whatever you have and it's because of the way i believe that icloud works with the mobile or with ios it just creates a lot of conflicts so basically in this reddit post there's a lot of uh, useful hints and tips of what to do what other services to use uh, you can use logseek sync which is the one that the team will push you towards or recommends it's uh, it's five dollars a month and at the same time you're supporting logseek itself but if you want something free you can use um, Git, and you can also use things like Sync Things, uh, Sync, Thing, Sync Thing, or um, another one, Google or Drive Sync, or something along those lines. So you can use alternatives to LogSeq Sync, but 
obviously if you want the support, if you want the log seek sync, it's probably best to go with that one. And Bass Total Tech, he did a live stream just yesterday on how he's cleaning his graph up a little bit, just so in preparation of, well, first to clean it up, and also in preparation of the DB mode, just so that he's he's ready for, for when it comes. So definitely worth checking that out if you have a lot of notes and you're thinking, I could spend a couple of hours tidying these up. Obsidian, um, this was an interesting one. So someone using Obsidian for three years, they've only just realized that you can use the page preview. Uh, pressing control over a link basically gives you a preview of what's on that page or command if you're using Mac. And it's a well-known one. It's been in the documentation for quite a while, but I guess as with every documentation, not everyone reads it. I certainly didn't read it. So this was a useful post. So hopefully that helps anyone else out there. Um, interesting comments in um, in this post here from, from users about how they use Obsidian. Some use a daily notes base, some have canned the daily notes and are using a weekly notes. Some have count, not using any of the time frame notes, but are just using a, a page and then feeding off that as, as the day goes on. Notion, uh, Notion has a lot of updates and there's the full release notes. There's definitely worth checking out the full release notes because there's, you've got little videos or little previews of, of what each feature is, how it works or how you can use it just to get the, give you that full insight. What I found was some were useful. So for example, suggested edits, if you're collaborating on a document, it's, it's certainly very useful. A bit like track changes in Word, better inbox, definitely useful. And then it just seems to go off piste a little bit and it's all AI. So if you're someone that doesn't use AI, obviously these updates are, are worthless to you and, and a bit irrelevant. But if you do use AI, I'd be certainly interesting, interested to hear are these updates beneficial or are they just adding bloatware and going a little bit in the direction that Microsoft was going a few years ago of just adding anything and everything that they could possibly think without really having the end user in mind. So definitely worth I definitely hope I can hear from you on that one. Uh, some productivity thoughts. So Storm from Stanford, I, um, I did a quick video on that one, which I've posted in the channel, so I'll skip over that one. And maybe the more interesting or the more surprising uh, news from, from the couple of weeks, or from this week, was the Bending Spoons. Um, they've bought WeTransfer. So WeTransfer, the popular digital file sharing and collaboration platform. Um, yeah. Bending Spoons has purchased that, and we shall see how they plan to integrate that with their other assets, especially Evernote. Are they going to do something with Evernote and WeTransfer in terms of file storage, file sharing, um, collaboration? Who knows? So certainly something to keep an eye out, and hopefully they're not just going to do uh, put it to waste and, and close it off in a few months. Obviously, there's been a lot of acquisitions. Was it uh, Lemon Squeezy got purchased by Stripe, Cron by Notion, uh, Notion bought another mail app. So it'd be interesting to see how all of these fit together in the overall knowledge management sphere. So that's it for this week. Hopefully you found this useful. I'll post a link to the, to the, to the, to the post and see you next week. Thanks very much for watching.